So I am really excited for this conversation. This is our first ever Empowering Convo. And I am so happy to have you here with us. So Hanta, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What are you doing right now? And we all know you are a PhD student in Oxford, but what are your subjects and what are you exploring in such a young age? All right. Um, so um, during my PhD at, at Oxford University, um, the main thing that I'm trying to explore is synthetic tissues. And that's basically looking at the basic building blocks of life, such as DNA, protein, lipid, and how I can make them come together to build things that resemble the kinds of structures that occur naturally in the human body. Um, but they can do very interesting and cool things that our normal cells can't do. And uh, by building these synthetic tissues, the hope is that one day uh, these tissues could be used to help with for medical purposes or as bio batteries, and we can have a range of diverse applications to help people. That sounds so cool! You're doing such a wonderful research, and I'm sure that must be helpful for the healthcare industry in the future. I hope Definitely. so. <laughs> Yes, well, one can only hope. So, I am very excited to be your host today. Mm -hmm. um, so, my name is Bhagyashree. I am the founder and CEO of Empower. And today, we are going to be talking about healthcare inequity in India as well as in the UK. Yeah. Firstly, why did we choose healthcare inequity? Why is it important to talk about it? Oh, um, I think it's really, really important because um, it, healthcare is just something which is so fundamental, in my opinion, that should be uh, equally accessible, available to everyone, regardless of where they were born, which country, which city, which part of the city, uh, which family, because it's about having an equal chance of living a life which is filled with dignity, which is a chance to just exist and to be and to be healthy um, and without uh, equal access to healthcare, care um, it's I, I, I think it's just absolutely so crushing to see that some people are able to afford uh, to spend money on their health care and therefore get a second chance at life when they have an unforeseen medical emergency but other people despite for instance the technology being out there to help save them they're just unable to access it and that is the reason why they uh, are unable to live a life and a life is lost so i think that is that is really really important to discuss like why is this happening because this is happening yes it is happening like during this time when we are going in the midst of a pandemic and there are emergencies coming up and there are shortages of beds and and living here in India where we had the most terrible second wave where there was acute shortage of beds and, and oxygen or oxygen ma and mask and oxygen tanks. Mm -hmm. It was so important to talk about this. And when we think that we do not have the right to health, actually, this is what I was just yeah. wondering today. Yeah. We all deserve to be healthy and to have access to health care despite our socioeconomic status. And we do not have the right to right to health. And, and what could be more significant than talking about this? Yeah. So, yeah. Hatha, have you ever wondered about having right to health as a fundamental right in every country? Do you have one? Um, we have one here. I, I'm not sure if there is something like that in the UK, but I'm not sure if that is actually the most, um, like, 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 I mean, it, I think it'd be great if that existed, but I don't personally feel that, that is where my energies are best spent because I feel like the law could sometimes have things written in, but then the actual implementation lags behind. So to get a new fundamental right introduced, it could take forever. But then just because it's there as a right doesn't actually mean that it's actually happening. So I feel like my personal opinion is that, you know, if somebody were out there were campaigning to make this happen, I mean, hats off to you because it is so hard to make such changes. At the same yeah. time, I feel like our efforts really, like, people's efforts also need to be, like, you know, very much focused on making sure that this is actually happening, that one way or another, we're actually making a difference uh, in, in the realities that people are experiencing and their accessibility to healthcare. 
Yeah, that's true. It's although we talk about having a law called right to health, but if it's implementation and execution actually differs from what is supposed to be planned, planned out there on on pen and with pen and paper, then it's of no use. But if someone is actually campaigning for it, then hats off to them. Yeah. So, how is the healthcare system out there in the UK? You have lived in two countries. You have been born and brought up in India, and then you have gone to the UK for your higher education. So, how? So, you might have observed both healthcare systems. But what actually made you advocate for healthcare, or just think about the healthcare systems? Was there any anecdote or any incident in your life which made you ponder over? social economic uh, inequalities which actually affect healthcare systems um <coughs> they weren't um well um i mean in the uk there's uh, to answer that question first there is the nhs which is an amazing service in that we are all able to access uh, healthcare uh, apparently free of charge um but of course every country has its own challenges so the uk is imperfect and on the one hand while everybody is able to access uh, a standardized level of healthcare the wait time to accessing healthcare can be very long and there can be people with very serious conditions who still have to wait as much as a month or more and um that has only been worsened by the pandemic so there are lots of problems and then there's still private healthcare which is available at a steep cost and so people who do not want to go through the wait they're still able to pay for that private healthcare and um, and i mean it, it's it's good for them that they're able to do it the problem here is that not everyone is able to do it and so the people who are unable to pay for that private healthcare have to wait before receiving care and sometimes the wait is just too long so that is one problem in the uk um to answer your second question about any personal incidents or like like what made me actually start think about uh inequity i think that really goes back to something that happened a long time ago while i was still in india uh i was unwell with malaria and my malaria um medication was prescribed to me to have uh twice a day so morning uh breakfast lunch and dinner but it was a sunday and on the sundays we have a lion and we don't really wake up first thing in the morning so my breakfast and my lunch dose happened very close to each other and i ended up accidentally overdosing on my medication and i had to be rushed to the hospital and now thankfully i had a family to support me to take me to the hospital i had a car that i was able to you know um easily access transport to get there and i lived only maybe 15 minutes away from our hospital at most even with traffic so i was really lucky to be able to get there asap but uh not everybody can do that like some people travel from quite far away from a hospital because they maybe they live at the outskirts uh not everybody has a car or is able to hail a cab and the ambulances can take forever to come in an additional charge to the patient the ambulance services are not free in india um and uh, not everybody has somebody to look after them and to take them to a hospital um so there are lots of inequities uh, as a result of this complicated system and um it just made me think that in, you know somebody who is as fortunate as me i got to the hospital just in the nick of time um I, if it was any more delayed i could have been paralyzed so what about somebody who does not have any of these uh ways in which they are privileged um uh, like they would just uh they would completely lose out and i think that is essentially the issue that i've always been trying to solve um over the past few years with through my different startup uh, ventures yeah that that's so true if if it was someone else who who didn't have an access to car or or who didn't have that facility of having someone else with them to actually rush them to the hospital then it could be fatal and yeah. and i think that this aspect of inequities need to be considered when we talk about healthcare especially when the health and well-being of of the citizens of the country also affects the socio economic implications yeah. of the country's future when the working population and the laborers are in good health and their well-being is being looked after then only they will be productive members yeah. of the society yeah. and that will help in the economic sector to also flourish 
Yeah, but I um, feel like a lot of employers don't really realize that either. I'm not sure. Like, okay, you do have the really big firms who offer health benefits and packages to go with the employment um, as perks. And people do sign up partly because of those kinds of perks. But your average employer, I don't think they, especially in India, I don't think they specifically emphasize um, the health care of their employees such as those of the laborers and we constantly hear about and probably not enough about the kind of terrible conditions that miners or other laborers are forced to work in simply because the economics of the, of don't add up for their in favor of their health care um I, I, and uh, the laborers just have to accept that status quo because there's nothing else for them to like they, they have no, no voice basically that's it's really sad to know that when someone is working for you and your employer is not providing you with health care benefits or, or health care protection. And I think that also plays a crucial role in, in determining the economic future of the nation. When, when your laborers, are not, laborers or the working population is not guaranteed right to health care or right to good health and the facilities that must be associated with one's job and one's work, then I think it's really sad because yeah. that then challenges one's productivity and the economic output of that firm or essentially of the nation and of the world when we talk about it on a global scale. And here we again come back to uh, the aspect of having right to health. But then there are also other aspects to be considered like public health care and private health care where, where the cost or the fees for, for having access to health care differ in huge proportions. Um, here during the pandemic uh, in the Indian healthcare system, um, private hospitals and private healthcare systems charged huge amounts for a vaccine or for a bed while the, while the public healthcare sector was being overburdened with, with the poor and the, with the poorer sections of the population who needed that urgent access to, to being treated for COVID-19. So is there a system of public and private healthcare in the UK too? And and is there inequity between public and the private health sector too in the UK? Um, so I, th I think, uh, as, I, as I briefly mentioned earlier, there's the NHS, which is the public sector, and there is the private sector. Um, and I, th I think the key difference between the public and private sectors here in the UK versus in India is that the public sector services are actually really good. So even though I can afford private health care, I just don't because I'm quite happy with the public health care. And unless I really, really did not want to wait to receive my health care, uh, um, in which case I would go for private treatment, I, I just wait and I go to the NHS because it is greatly subsidized and it is of very high quality. Whereas in India, um, it, it, I, from my understanding, if, if, if you can pay, even by borrowing some money potentially, if you can pay to afford a private healthcare hospital and private private treatment, you would prefer that over going for a government uh, treatment because everybody knows that the government hospitals are really not that good. And um, that goes down, I think. And so in, because of that, because uh, I think that is where the inequity comes in because um, you just don't have access to good services. The services aren't as fleshed out in India as they are in the UK. Um, and, and, and that leads to a, a, a severe inequity, I think, in what people are and aren't able to access. Yeah. By this, I can actually remember the words of the economist Amartya Sen when he said that no country has ever provided universal access to healthcare without actually investing in the public health sector. And that investment in the public health sector, I think, is really crucial and significant. Mm -hmm. See, it's interesting you bring that up, because if you look at the GDP budget that is released by the parliament, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but the percentage that's actually spent on healthcare is very poor. Um, I think the current government in India does do a better job than previous governments, if I'm not remembering incorrectly. Um, I'm not sure. But I, but generally, like the percentage that's spent on, say, railways or one of the other economic um, priorities that are very important, they tend to be much more than uh, spent on healthcare. 
Um, and uh, I, I think that says a lot about how countries generally tend to prioritize their healthcare systems um, uh, over or, or, or lack or thereof um, over other systems. Yes, I think that is a crucial point to be considered when you think about the investment of countries in the healthcare sector compared to other sectors like railways, transport, or or foreign relations. Because here, again, we need to emphasize on the point that if the healthcare and the well-being of the citizens of country is is being looked after, then the other, other aspects of development can be flourished. Mm-hmm. So I think it is important to, to realize like what is the amount of investment that countries actually put in in the healthcare sector in the public healthcare sector and also considering how the private sector actually dominates over over the social socio socioeconomic inequities considering that only the urban population or, or the rich people have greater access or they prefer to go to the private healthcare hospitals and in that way they dominate by putting up mm-hmm. price surges for for basic communities like even the covid-19 vaccination. Mhm. I think um uh, so I I'm not sure I can actually comment on what is a good percentage to put towards uh, the healthcare budget. But um I I do feel like the healthcare is healthcare is generally underfunded um by by governments. Um as is most things to be honest. Um but on your latter point about private healthcare dominating I think here what we need to focus on are the practices underlying that domination because I think private healthcare has a really good opportunity to shake things up. We can't always rely on our governments on doing the on being able to bridge that gap because um simply because even the most well-intentioned well-intentioned governments are up against a lot of economic and bureaucratic challenges and it's it's a very big system to try to change from the inside and so while again efforts are needed on that i think um as members of uh, as private members we have a very unique opportunity to enter the private healthcare system and use the dominating uh, position of the private healthcare system to make healthcare more equitable by introducing new technologies new on uh, new enterprises um and uh, and making uh, private healthcare more aligned to the interests of everybody Yes that's true. We actually cannot rely on the government for everything and as you said the private sector actually has the power to shake and, and dominate the system as 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 in itself it is dominating the healthcare system. So if the private healthcare sector brings up policies to actually bridge this gap then I think that would be certainly beneficial. So when we talk about healthcare um as young people because uh essentially like you are also studying in university and and I am in high school right now so um considering like what is the emphasis being put up on healthcare in in educational systems again is there like social economic inequality there too and is there emphasis given to the mental aspect of healthcare too as much as there is given to physical aspect of healthcare i think it's really interesting you bring up mental health because i think that's definitely not looked at um as much um i was fortunate to go to a school where we had mental health uh, talks um we had we had some guest speakers come in and talk about their experiences and how they actually got over their mental health problems and uh, and and won the fight against uh, what they had been facing um even though it is obviously a continuous fight it's not a once and done thing um and it was really interesting and important to have those conversations because i'm sure a lot of my other my peers uh sitting in 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 that room were probably going through the same challenges that they were seeing somebody in front of them tell them are going to pass but also for me personally as somebody who's been fortunate to have not experienced that kind of challenge during high school i did end up having friends at university who were going through such challenges and so having heard about them in my school curriculum made me a lot more comfortable with knowing how to best support my friends and what to do and what not to do for the for their well-being but the inequity is that uh okay not everybody gets such a great school curriculum uh with a lot and aware and access to guest speakers who've been through it and an empowering environment within the school to learn about it 
Um, and this is not just mental health, but also physical health. Not everybody gets first aid training courses in school or um, access to um, being made aware just how important, say, all types of vaccines are or how, how imp what do the, their different healthcare options are out there, like truly like everything or having important debates and discussions, which are moderated by a neutral party um, on what is the best healthcare practice. Um, I, I think these are really important discussions to have, but they're often dismissed or they're not included, um, maybe because the schools are underfunded or maybe because there isn't enough staff or maybe the staff themselves are unaware. Um, and so at school level, I think there are a lot of a lot of, lot of different ways in which these conversations get missed out on and they're very important to have. Um, but apart from just conversations and awareness, it's also access to treatment. Um, of course, we've discussed at length the access to physical health care, but the same problems come in again and are only much more worsened with mental health care because um, you have the additional element of the, um, the stigma associated with stigma. it. Um, and that's the additional thing. Um, I think that's also there with certain elements of physical health care. Not everybody wants to let somebody know that they have had a heart attack or maybe not everybody wants to let somebody know that they've been through um, a surgery for their ovaries or something. Um, it can be quite private, but I think it is even like definitely way worse if it is about mental health. Definitely, it is way worse for, for those when we consider the mental health care sector, uh, especially considering the, the stigma which is already associated with it. And, 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 and worse off, we have, we have truly less number of mental health care systems and resources compared to physical health care resources. Mm -hmm. So there's this aspect of stigma which adds in into the socioeconomic inequities. And considering the high cost, like the the much expensive cost that the people suffering from mental illnesses have to go through for, <coughs> for having access to therapy and, yeah. and other mental health resources. There, the socioeconomic inequity comes in place and that, like, there we can see the drastic socioeconomic inequity when we consider access to therapy, access to mental health care resources, or even access to physical health care surgeries when we consider heart surgery or like cardiac surgeries where in India, we it takes at least 22 lakhs, 20 lakhs to 24 lakhs, which is a huge amount. Yeah. And considering that no one wants their family member to to go through the illness and, and be in pain and we want the treatment to happen. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have the resources <laughs> or the financial capacity to afford it, then that also creates that mental stress and that mental burden on exactly. that family. Exactly. I was just going to say that, you know, that, you know, it's so linked um, because you could be going through this, um, you, you could have a physical diagnosis, but then, like you said, the stress of dealing with that, the stress of finding out how to finance that, uh, the potential process of dealing with the loss of a person who uh, is very important to you, um, all of that can trigger additional mental health complications. So it's, it's, it's all linked. And then that can lead to even more stress because it's so hard to find the right support. And in the case of mental health, even to get a diagnosis and know that something is wrong, um, because a lot of people will not go out there and seek a diagnosis. They'll just think we're stressed and they'll just stop it at that. And it might be something much, much more severe and they don't even know. So it's, it's all linked. And I think that is why it's really important to have very wholesome care packages for patients, um, packages that take into account both, like this for, uh, the, using the example you mentioned of cardiac healthcare, somebody going through a heart attack, um, even if they survive the heart attack, the aftercare needs to take into account both things like their medication, their lifestyle, their diet, but then also their psychosocial well-being. And it needs to take into account um, how to best make progress on both of those metrics for the patient, not just one or the other. And uh, that's something that's definitely a missing link, I think, especially in India. I am I'm so glad that we actually discussed that how these two sectors are actually linked. Yeah, someone has just mentioned that we in India need to do groundwork in a better manner. Health and education sector both need more attention here. That's very true. Um, we have Supriya Goyal who just said this. Truly, really health and education both need more attention here. It's 
like now we are having this conversation and 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 i never realized that the public health the physical health care and and the mental health care is actually so linked when when your family member or your close one is going through something as painful as that and when you are going through this entire struggle to bring in resources and to gather them and actually pay for the finances and the expenses that that come for medication surgery after care as you mentioned then the psychological effects on not just the patient but also the family members also need to be considered yeah and i mean and we don't I, have resources for treating that psychological effect that that we have on the families and on the patient yeah um and and so the, I, there are basically two categories of patients there's the one category of patients who is able to somehow seek who seeks healthcare and i think um that ranges in in the, in the order of about 78% but there is a 20% out there who just won't seek healthcare from say hospitals etc when they have an event that is something that uh, the the majority of people would go to the hospital for and there are a variety of different reasons why they might not do that they might be um, they may be quacks they may be other other practices and other medications that they rely on which could be effective for other things but are just not the right choice because for this and that comes down to lack of awareness and education or it could be that they just don't have any money and so they're just kind of their family members have no choice but to just leave that person to be in a bed and just hope and pray that they are able to survive it and they never even see a doctor or get to a hospital and it's 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 absolutely shocking to know that something like that happens like if you imagine you have a ridiculous fever you might have other symptoms and all you can do is just lie in a corner of your um home if you have a home uh and and just hope uh that you make it and rely 100% on your immunity and your body to fight against it rather than using the medications and the technology that has been developed and honed perhaps for centuries or decades that is proven to be effective uh, at treating that and the only difference is your accessibility to that technology and that's that that is that's true exactly. inequity that that makes so much sense like like you have the resources out there the technology has actually uh, like there are resources in this world and the technology has actually progressed to to have effective medications and effective solutions to your problem and to your and to your health issues but then just because of uh, the inability to pay for the finances pay for the expenses you would not visit a doctor and you just hope and pray that somehow a miracle happens and yeah. and your condition gets cured and it is not like you do not want to be healthy you want to be healthy you want to work and you want to be productive you want to live your life yeah <laughs> no do do you want to be uh, like un- unhealthy and lying around in that state but then they they just forced to do that situation that point comes come to a point of desperation where you simply do you cannot afford healthcare you can see i have seen so many patients who are suffering from cancer or or other horrible diseases where the expenditure for actually providing care for them is is much much high and and then when you and then when you're suffering from a terrible disease like that and you see that there is a solution out there and you can be saved from from facing death but you simply cannot afford it there's this huge gap the huge bridge of affording the healthcare affording that solution which is out there in front of you but you cannot yeah. cross the bridge simply because you, you yeah. cannot afford it you're not financially cap- capable I think it's also interesting to discuss and think about where the unaffordability exactly comes from. So what makes healthcare unaffordable? Like why is a individual in a given position unable to afford healthcare? So what I have found from doing my research with uh, speaking to patients is that a lot of patients find it unaffordable to be able to take time off from work to travel to work uh, to travel to a hospital because that is results in lost wages so the actually taking time out of your day to make a hospital or a doctor visit in itself um makes makes the doctor visit unaffordable and i think that is um th- that is extremely ironic because you might be somebody who would have otherwise done so but the inconvenience uh, of uh, taking the time out to do that is what makes you not do it because of the cost involved uh other things are transport the travel because you could be living um like i mentioned earlier um quite far away perhaps from um 
from 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 uh, the hospital and so getting a cab or uh, a train or something in there um to to get you to the hospital um that 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 could be a cost that you you are unable to afford especially if you're not traveling by yourself you're say traveling with one or two carers so the costs add up because of of that reason uh you might also be dependent on somebody else uh to help you navigate and go to a hospital so then you get kind of get tied down to that other person's schedule rather than your own uh, only you might have lots of other responsibilities um outside of just uh working so that so just being able to get to a hospital that in itself <laughs> it's it's a big challenge for a lot of people out there um for 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 a vast majority of people and it is not a simple matter yes that's true commuting definitely needs to be a point is a point which needs to be considered when you consider the expenses mm mm-hmm. uh, and the time required to to reach and acquire that treatment um so how so you have actually um been interested in talking about tech entrepreneurship and how it can help aid the healthcare sector so can you tell us a little bit about it as we reach the conclusion about our discussion surrounding healthcare inequity yeah thanks for asking about that so um <laughs> actually i think we've we've covered a lot of the problems that exist in inequity but the like you know what can what can people like you and i do about it so and i think what we can do about it is obviously make ourselves more aware uh, about these issues so that we're more sensitized to them um but then also um uh, be aware of what other technologies and what other enterprises are out there and then contribute to the movement and um to you know, try to innovate and to make change if that's something you're interested in and so it's the last bit that um that I am really excited to be able to do um i know supriya goel lying for is saying we should keep the population in mind too in talking about healthcare so um it, i'm i'm not sure what that means is that mean population size or or uh, the demographics but um y- y- yeah um so for example if uh, it's a problem for people to get to the hospital then uh, there are lots of ways in which technology can tackle that we can build maybe better commute systems um so i know that uh, there were some um th- there were some enterprises introduced in india where they um, made new a- ambulance services and um they, they, they this isn't necessarily that tech heavy but it is entrepreneurship making a change so these ambulance services were uh, had price structures that were supposed to be more affordable and they help uh, ferry the um a patient um f- from their home to the hospital uh and they have quick response time and that quick response time i think is where perhaps tech can actually come and make a big difference because they can help uh, calculate how to efficiently allocate resources but what i am trying to do is actually completely remove that equation so you don't have to even get to the hospital and that's a very exciting field of telehealth and m health uh where um the kind of healthcare that would normally be available in the clinic is now actually available from the comfort of your own home on demand at any point of time during the day at any point of time during the week that you want it to happen rather than calling a doctor up and asking the doctor for an appointment and then fitting your schedule around the doctor's schedule which i think just doesn't work out for a majority of the people so um that's what my company sukoon care limited is doing at the moment and um so i i i think there's a great opportunity here for uh, that, uh for tech to enable that um it's it's also really interesting because um if you think about it every person whether or not they have the money to afford healthcare they do tend especially in urban india they they do tend to have um at least a mobile phone device if not a smartphone device so the fact that india is one of the biggest consumers of the of mobile phones and of technology i think that is an amazing opportunity for private healthcare providers to use that technology uh that penetration uh to actually reach lots of people and make the delivery of healthcare so much more equitable that is a wonderful point you made like considering that india is one of the largest consumers consumers has a population who has a large who is the largest consumers of of technology and the internet and at least a mobile phone is not a smartphone that and if we use that technology to actually help aid this healthcare problem mm-hmm. and healthcare problems that we are facing in the healthcare sector then i think that can be a great move 
in actually providing solution for this and from my point of view i also think that considering that healthcare issues also also root from issues of water and sanitation and literacy i think it is important to address these issues too at a grassroots levels when we consider water sanitation access to access to clean water and and access to sanitation i think it is an access to nutrition mm-hmm. and good food yeah i think that also needs to be considered when we try to just mitigate the amount of health issues that people have and help elevate the well-being of your population see see that goes into a whole other pandora box of discussion because uh, what you're talking about is preventative healthcare so there's preventative healthcare and then there is the so that's uh, proactive and then there's the reactive and there need to be investment in both i think the governments are generally the ones who are doing more of the proactive stuff and uh, the government and the private share the burden of the reactive stuff um i th- i think it's is very hard for private sector to do proactive things but it is necessary um and um what the private sector in the proactive area does rather than actual healthcare companies doing proactive things it is other companies in other industries so there are very very innovative models of sanitizing your water by using very inexpensive uh, devices that uh, scientists are developing scientists researchers students like you and me are developing you just kind of add it to your tap and that automatically regulates the pressure um, of of the water the the water quality and monitors it alerts you and solves those problems um and there's some amazing companies out there that are doing that so not really healthcare companies but they're making a difference to healthcare uh because they are tech companies and they're using tech to help communities and i think that is quite powerful yes that truly really is powerful i think that our discussion involved like so discussing a lot of topics concerning the healthcare sector the private and the public sector as well as the healthcare system in the uk and concerning we also talked about the mental health problem and physical health problems and how both of them are interlinked to each other and how technology can help aid these healthcare issues that we just discussed mm-hmm. and i think it was it was a very nice opportunity that we actually had these conversations when we talk about having awareness and education about these topics especially when we talked about having access to schools where you are educated about these topics and when you have these conversations but it's good to actually initiate conversations on your own and just get start uh, to get started on talking about these things yeah and it was really nice talking to you hansa and i'm really glad right. we covered this healthcare topic yeah. considering that we are in the midst of pandemic which still needs to be conquered and and it was amazing talking to you it i i personally gained a lot of insights about the healthcare sector up there in the uk and and the tech solutions which can be garnered as a generation who uses technology so much in order to help aid these problems mm-hmm. yeah thank you so much for having me it, it it was a real pleasure the best way i could spend my saturday morning honestly yes that's true for me too the best way i could spend my saturday afternoon here in india it was really nice talking to you hansa and everyone thank you for tuning in and thank you for joining this discussion it is it is a really great moment for all of us as young people to to see that we are actually engaging in these conversations and having conversations on topics that matter to us so join us for our next empowering convos on learning and education on the fourth saturday of this month and we are really excited to have you there and thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day ahead hansa and it was a pleasure hosting this today's right. empowering convo bye thank you so much thank you bye